Welcome back to the final video of the week, taking a look at the latest aviation news. I say final video of the week, even though this is being published at 12 a.m. on a Monday, so it doesn't entirely make sense, but just run with me that this is the final video for the week just gone. Focus is very much centered on North America, with coverage on United, Delta, Air Canada, and such. So make sure you stay tuned, and let's not waste any further time and jump right into it. With United Airlines, who have seen their first A321neo complete its first flight. After departing from Hamburg, registered as N44501, the A321neo is part of a substantial commitment to the A321neo family by the major US carrier, which consists of 120 units spread across the A321neo and the upcoming A321 XLR. The Airbus A321XLR is slated to enter service per Airbus's latest guidance from next year onwards, and will then therefore eventually be transitioned into the United fleet. Its extra long range will benefit the carrier significantly in achieving long-term route goals, while also removing some of the older units. United is another carrier that though is being currently impacted by delays in delivery of these new planes, as their initial plans were to welcome a pretty large number of units in the A320neo series this calendar year. However, given it is almost October, scary to actually say that, you can imagine they won't be able to welcome in as many as they had initially wanted. The first A321neo is expected to enter service this December. This is permitting no late changes do take place, and it will be deployed to Phoenix from Chicago, all part of the airline's commitment to reducing the average age of the fleet and introducing new fuel-efficient aircraft to truly take them forward into the future. The week, how I always tell you, is pretty heavy when it comes to route news. It's probably one of the most consistent updates we get from airlines right around the world, and it's not always positive. While largely there will be coverage on expansion, sometimes airlines do have to realign their network to fit in with demand and available aircraft. Delta has announced the cancellation of service to Dusseldorf in Germany. As a result of the decision by Delta to axe the service, which obviously is unfortunate, I think the biggest takeaway is that Dusseldorf will become a city without a direct benefit to either the United States or Canada. It's a rather landmark fact that it simply won't have any type of connection. Dusseldorf is the sixth largest city in Germany per the latest figures. It had a population of over 600,000. However, it will now be without a service to either Canada or the United States directly, as Delta really cites a lack of appeal for the city within Germany. Delta's service with its Boeing 767-400ER was from Atlanta, and interestingly enough, actually was only reinstated in May of 2023. This was following Delta suspending the flight during the height of the pandemic. So it's actually only been operational for a handful of months as DL-90 and DL-91, before eventually Delta has now pulled the plug on the service. As part of the axing, Delta also announced a pretty major expansion looking ahead, with its biggest transatlantic schedule following a record-setting summer, alongside many more route resumptions, changes, and growth. The schedule is slated to offer customers even more options flying to destinations around the world, with Delta also believing there's been no better time to explore Europe. Delta will utilize New York JFK as a key gateway to operate 260 flights to 18 countries and 29 destinations towards the likes of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. For the first time, Delta will connect customers on a non-stop service from New York through to Naples. This is slated to begin on May the 23rd, 2024. Shannon in Ireland will also return to the network on the very same day. This is the first time the airline has connected Shannon from JFK since 2019, so even before the pandemic. Beginning a little earlier on April 9th, 2024, Delta will begin serving Munich from New York JFK 2. Meanwhile, Atlanta will offer non-stop flights to Zurich. This will be four times weekly, starting on May the 31st, 2024. Atlanta to Paris and Venice will also increase service as they witness pretty strong demand across these two major European cities. Los Angeles' non-stop daily flight to Auckland, New Zealand, beginning next month on October 28th, will become a year-round flight. 
Oceania really continues to be a sticking point for Delta's expansion, with Sydney also slated to get a double daily service starting in December. No doubt for the busy holiday season down under. Recent talk on forums have even highlighted a potential Melbourne launch. However, this would be some time away and Delta would no doubt need to have the available aircraft to be able to deploy a unit on this route. The resumption of a four times weekly service from Los Angeles to Shanghai will take place on March the 31st of next year. While these are the notable changes, if you will, coming to the network, Delta is pretty committed to increasing flights across the United States to destinations in Europe as it experiences fantastic levels of demand and can make all of this happen. So these adjustments are only some of a wider network change. Air Canada Cargo, off the back of a pretty busy summer season, will continue to offer customers year-round capacity to European cities. A decision to offer these services follows a strategic choice to extend passenger services to a level to what was seen during the summer to these cities. The cargo division of Air Canada will offer customers belly space on critical routes such as Montreal to Rome, Toronto to Madrid, and Toronto to Copenhagen. However, the plans also extend away from these destinations with service to Lyon starting in mid-October for their passenger operations. Thus, cargo options are made available in the belly. While any new or returning city pairing is just generally exciting for Air Canada Cargo, as they'll be able to utilize the belly for these operations, with services only set to grow. Lastly, and something that occurred during the week, Emirates signed a reciprocal interline agreement with Sri Lankan Airlines to boost customer access and connectivity long into the future. The Dubai-based airline notes that thanks to this new agreement, access to unique points on each carrier's respective network via Colombo and Dubai will be made possible possible all on a single ticket, adding further ease to journeys worldwide. As reported, the Interline Partnership unlocks 15 regional destinations operated by Sri Lankan Airlines for Emirates passengers, with better connectivity also witnessed across the Emirates network for Sri Lankan passengers. Thanks to Emirates' massive global presence, points across the Middle East, Africa, and much more will now be accessible. Cities such as New York, JFK, Los Angeles, Chicago, Nairobi, Muscat, and Cairo will all be available on the Interline Agreement. Emirates has had a pretty busy 2023 thus far, signing new code share, interline, and more agreements with carriers right around the world as it looks to improve its global network and relationships with significant carriers. That's going to conclude today's aviation news recap and my coverage for the week. Thank you very much for your support. Enjoy not having to see my videos in your feed for a day. I'll be back in around 48 hours to once more take a look at the first day of the working week within the industry. Thanks and I'll see you next time. And we'll fly.